How to build a seven-figure law firm in three years. Did you go to law school for seven years of your life so you can make less money than a trucker? Why? Why are people doing this? It is simple. You have the ability within you to make great money. Over the next hour, I'm gonna give you 10 tips for free. These are free tips that will help you develop your practice right now where you will be able to bring in more money more efficiently with less headache. You are in the golden industry to become wealthy. All you need to know is a few tricks of the trade to get your practice off the ground. If you're gonna work for another person, I promise you, you're always going to be a paid employee. Now, I have run into attorneys all the time that tell me the reason why they just don't feel secure running their own practice that they're going to make it. They actually believe the lie that being an employee of a firm gives you more security. Even if you are an owner and you go bankrupt because you run out of money, you still have people ringing on that phone. You still have business coming in. You'll never be hungry as an owner. Hans Rowling in his book, Factfulness, gives an illustration that I think applies to attorneys. And he would ask people how they perceived the world was doing. Overwhelmingly, people scored very low. So low, they could have guessed better. So he realized something was going on. When he gave his test, most people out of a 13 question test would only get two of the questions right. How is that possible? Chimpanzees could guess better than that. The negative instinct. We tend to see the world in a negative way. And I have noticed that this is what attorneys do. They assume the worst. In times of despair, they think everything's gonna fall apart and they jump out of their practice and they run back to a firm for the shelter that a law firm provides. I wanna guide you through how to avoid the temptation, the feeling, I felt it, I've been there, where you feel like everything's about to fall apart on you. I know how to handle it, and I can teach you how to do it. The biggest and most important question, if you're going to buy my course, why buy it from me? I have done it. Unlike all the other people out there that wanna coach you, I actually have built the firm. I employ 20 people full time right now. I have a payroll of $150,000 a month. I have put my money where my mouth is and I've put $400,000 into a CRN system that I'm going to teach you how to use called EP Firms that is going to automate your business and put everything together for you so you can run a practice. No one else. I have no, no other courses out there where the instructor put his own money down because he believes so much in his system. So what can you expect over the next hour? I'm gonna spend about five minutes talking about my backstory so you can see that I know what I'm talking about, that I actually did what I'm telling you to do. And then after that, I'm gonna give you 10 free tips. The last two, I promise, if you'll stay to the end and you'll do the last two, you will take your practice to another level that you could have only dreamed of. And if you will stay past all of that, I will give you the vision. The vision that came five years ago when I realized I was losing 1% of my business to the internet every year. I realized five years ago I needed to put into motion something that could allow attorneys to compete in the technology age. In 2009 is when I started my law firm. In 2010, I lost $30,000 feeding my family. I had a child in, in 2010 and two other kids. And my wife stayed home with our children. And so it costs a lot to live our life. Plus, I had all the expenses of the law firm. I almost went bankrupt that year, but I was able to break through within the next year to stage one, which is you turn a profit. And in 2011, I made $70,000 according to my tax return. In the year 2012, I was able to pass over into stage two. 
I settled a large case. It was a wonderful year. I paid off my student loans. I paid off all my credit card debt that I had used to finance my, my law firm and get it off the ground. And I was off to the races. I thought I was the king of the world, but then reality hit and 2013 hit. And I only uh, was able to bring in $400,000. Now $400,000 was is still a wonderful year. I, I, I um, was still at the basic beginnings of, of of running a practice. I still hadn't figured out how the stages are supposed to run, what I was supposed to be doing. So 2013, 2014, and 2015, I stagnated. I couldn't break through. I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to be doing to get to the next stage. And then everything started to come together. And I hit stage three in 2016 and broke through. And then the next year in 2017, I doubled the amount of money uh, that I was bringing in. And by the um, by 2018, I brought in $2.5 million through my businesses, not just my law firm. I'm going to talk about uh, how you are going to use your law firm as a system to diversify your wealth and to get into other businesses and have income coming in on the side from other sources. Then in 2019, I was able to get it up to $3.5 million. And this year, even through COVID, I'm projected to make $4.5 million through my businesses. I have reflected back to how stupid I was in 2009 and 2010. If another firm would have come along and offered me $80,000 a year, I would have taken it. I would have taken it and worked for them and missed out on all the opportunity that has come to me I can help you get to stage four in three years. Tip number one, it goes to all those guys that are watching this video and gals that are out there that are sick and tired of working for the man and you wanna work for yourself. How would I start my own law firm if I was working for another firm? Tip number one is hire an employee before you start your own practice. Now here's how it works. The great thing is you don't actually have to worry about anything because we have created a seven figure law firm employee guidebook to get things up and off the ground in the first three months. So you could actually continue to work for your current law firm while your employee builds your firm for you. If you hire somebody right now and you pay them $12 an hour. It's far better than you quitting your job and losing that $40 an hour that you're making to move your practice forward. And even if you were to start your practice tomorrow, it's gonna to take you at least three to six months to start generating the revenue and getting the business in order to pay your bills. There are so many young men and women out there that are looking for work. You can hire someone for $12 an hour with the promise that they're going to make a good amount of money that can help you get things going. You can work out of your house, have them start putting the things together that need to be put together and into a simple system to start working things. And that's one of the things that we created EP Firms for is a CRM system to help whoever your employee is to get things off the ground. Now, if you don't have a job right now, you will be that employee and you will get this business off the ground through our course, we'll show you the steps that you need to take to overcome all the difficulty in setting up a practice. Now, the second thing when starting a practice, there are sacrifices I've made. There's no secret sauce to the world. Cutting your current expenses are going to be the most important thing that you can do for yourself. Going in and looking at the fact that if you have a brand new car, you might need to go drive a beater. I was a scoutmaster for a long time and when I would show up at the scout meetings, my car was so crappy that the dashboard was peeling off the top. And the scouts used to call me the ghetto attorney because they're like, oh, their parents drew, drove these nice cars and they looked at me and go, You're, what, what kind of car are you driving? What kind of attorney are you? And I said, well, I do criminal law right now. The biggest thing, the question that you should be wrapping your mind around more than anything right now is, how are you gonna get clients? There are six ways that when you run a small practice that you get clients. Number one, the search engine.
Google, Bing, all the search engines, it's paid advertising. And they have totally changed it. If you go talk to some old place about, oh, you need to be ranked number one on the page, that is baloney BS that won't get you clients. It's all about, number one, Google reviews. Google reviews are the number one reason why people go to a search engine, they look at Google reviews, and then they determine. Or Bing, if they go to Bing, they go to the review section, and that is how they're going to determine if they're going to use you, is those reviews. That is the number one reason. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little about how the CRM system that we're creating is going to automate and get those reviews for you. Number two, referrals. A referral-based business is great, especially if you can get attorneys to refer you business because you are going to focus exactly on a particular area of law that other attorneys don't do or the attorneys that you're going after don't want to do. This often involves areas of practice that are usually more difficult. Referrals also can be great if you're an estate planning attorney and you know who to go after, like the financial advisor. You go out and if you meet 50 financial advisors, you will have so much estate planning work that you will never have to worry about anything ever again. But keeping 50 financial advisors happy would be a big, tall task and require a lot of your time. You'd probably need a lot of staff to help out with that. Number three is going to be how you can immediately start getting business with almost no work, but it costs some money to get onto. It's the attorney insurance programs like Hyatt. You can get on these insurance programs and if you're willing to pick certain industries, a certain tax law, you will get the phone ringing immediately, but you gotta buy insurance up front and it's kind of low pay work, but if you're willing to work extra hours and get things off the ground, you'll get people in your door immediately. Number four, social media. This is actually not a place that the reviews matter that much. Most people don't click on a, a, a firm and then go look at the reviews. I mean, some people do, but most people in, for example, what I do, they go to sites, community sites, and you have to get kind of popular in your area. And we get, we're going to talk about how you get onto mommy sites and other sites that people communicate and pick attorneys for. Social media can be a great way to get clients. It's just not going to be a home run. Network marketing. This is how I got my firm going. I went to the good old chamber. I went through all the different network marketing programs and got to know people. I spent a lot of time. And if you're an attorney willing to do this, you will get work. Now, it's not the best uh, time spent. You could be spending your time doing other things. However, when you're getting started, it's a great way to get to that people know you in the community. A lot of good friends I have, a lot of my companies, I have multiple companies, but some of my companies that I created branched off from the fact that I met the people at these chambers. I learned them to be honest, good people and got involved with them and were able to create some good businesses. And the last is if you can hit it, the gold mine, if you're good at blogging or video blogging, video is going to be the king of the future. People aren't going to read articles. I'm going to tell you right now, I get far more off of YouTube than I've ever gotten off of writing any article that I've posted on my webpage or anything like that because people will sit and listen to you. People like to listen to attorneys, especially if you're good at articulating, especially if you're a female and you are attractive. If you are a good looking female and then you are an attorney and you are articulate, you can kill it through video marketing. Men, people just don't like looking at guys' faces very long and I don't blame them. You have to look at me and you're like, gosh, what's wrong with him? He's kind of a meaty face looking guy. Three, location is key. You should spend more time just determining the exact location that you want to open up your practice more than any other thing before you get started. Any other more market research you can do, you have to think through. Now, there is a very simple system. If you want to learn how to do this, you go to Google Maps and you look around. And the number one thing that you're looking for is, Who's my competition in the area? If you get stuck by a guy like me that has 170, 180 reviews, depending on when you're looking at this video, uh, you're going to very quickly get swallowed up by me. And it's gonna be very difficult to compete. But if you wanna find an area, so what I do is I go to Google Maps and I pick and I pick a location because the number one reason people say, why did you pick me? Well, someone referred you, but I, I went online and found out you were just down the street. 
it's all about convenience for people. Being in the community, being close to people, making it easy for them to get to your office, that is going to determine more than anything. Learning the patterns and behavior. There's a reason why they spend millions of dollars to put a Starbucks on every corner. Location was actually one of the first things ever told to me about how important it was. It was by an old time attorney that I grew up with. When my dad was deployed to Desert Storm, this attorney who was a well-to-do man because he ran his own practice for years, he's the one that provided Christmas for us. And Mr. Tressaway said to us, to me when I started my own practice, pick the outer edge of an expanding city. Put yourself at the edge of that city and the city will grow up around you and you'll be successful. That advice was gold. Four, people don't care about you. They don't care that you're starting your own law firm and wanna get you business. There are a few people out there, of course, your mom and maybe some people in her, her club that are, they're gonna come in and get their will done for you. But most people, they care about themselves. If you want to be successful, you have to answer the question, how can you be a tool for them to help them make money? And if you can answer that question, then you're not going to get referrals. This is a very simple concept. Now I do estate planning mostly and I had to learn how do I do this? And so I learned very well with financial advisors. I was not gonna be able to refer them a bunch of business, but I could take their referral and make them more money. So I learned exactly the things in financial planning that were necessary. For example, life insurance. A lot of uh, financial advisors have been trying to convince their client for years to get better life insurance. Well, I tell the financial advisor, tell me what you are trying to get the client to do. Why are you trying to do this? Make sure they're not just some person trying to rip them off because you have a fiduciary duty to your client. Oh, that is actually good. They do need to do that. And then I mentioned that to them in the planning and almost always they go back to the financial advisor and they do it. The financial advisor calls me and thanks me. Guarantee I get more referrals in the future from that financial advisor. You learn that trick. You learn how you can help another person, not how they can help you. And you both benefit. You're going to get a lot of referrals. Five, human beings, our whole body, everything. It's understanding how human beings work. And human beings work very simply. We aim at something and then we put our resources to go after that thing. Now, traditionally back in the day, it usually was some prey that we were hunting. It was a garden we were trying to plant or it was some enemy that needed to be destroyed because it was attacking our village. But now people have all sorts of problems. And when you're an attorney, your job is to help the person accomplish their aim. And then my goal is to help them achieve that. If you help people move towards their goal, when people talk about their emotions, they're usually talking about movement that they feel towards that aim. Happiness generally is when people feel like they're moving towards their goal. Depression is when people feel like they're moving away. Anxiety is when people don't know what to do. And when someone walks into your office, you find out their aim. They're really anxious. They don't know what they need to be doing. And then you lay out a path for them. This is what we need to do to accomplish this goal. They will hand you money and sometimes large sums of money to solve that problem, depending how big it is in their life. I had one lady come in. I knew she was going to be a difficult client. She expressed to me the problem that she was having. And I thought through this, I'm like, I don't necessarily want this lady as a client, but if she's willing to pay this amount, I'll take her. So I said, if you give me $20,000, I will do that for you. She wrote down a check immediately and goes, here, this is the happiest money I'm going to spend. You can now solve this problem. And my staff took it on. And within a month, we solved the problem for her. And she was completely happy because this thing was consuming her life and making her miserable. And giving $20,000 to get rid of it was worth every penny to her. She loves us. If you learn that about humans, you will be able to help them and they will be happy to pay you.
to number six through our courses, and that's law firm finance. You need to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you're not gonna be able to run a practice. Now, luckily, EP Firms is designed to automate all your numbers for you, to tell you how much you're making every month, where your money's going. It is designed to help pull things together, but EP Firms is not a complete system, and you need QuickBooks. You need to be able to run your accounting. You need to be able to hire someone to do this. If you don't, the fastest way you're not gonna go out of business is not because you can't do this, it's because the IRS comes and shuts you down because you don't pay your taxes right. Second thing on what the basic tip I can give you. If I was here talking to you where it's like, hey Taylor, give me a tip. You have to learn the monthly fluctuation of your industry. Every industry is different. I know mine very well. I know which months are ups. I know which months I go on vacation. I know on which months I do not go on vacation. December for estate planning is a great month to go on vacation. Nothing is going to happen. But I know right after Christmas is a horrible time. 26th, 27th, 28th, no attorneys are working. Guess whose phone is ringing like crazy? Mine is. I make hundreds of thousands of dollars because I advertise like crazy and my phone's ringing and my employees work during that time. But before, not much is happening. People don't want to do things before. You take your time off then. You got to know your fluctuations in your business. You got to know if you're a family law attorney that January is your biggest month. You need to hit the advertising budget on that time. How do you know this? Well, EP Firms, we have a dashboard that tells us all this information. It shows when my clients are coming in, when they're not coming in. This information takes years to develop, but if you probably talk to other attorneys that do what you want to do, you'd figure out very quickly uh, when the business comes in. You gotta be willing to adjust your schedule to what's best for your business. You can't do this. That's my seventh tip. Well, that's, that's crazy. Well, why the heck are you doing this? You cannot do this by yourself. I cannot stress to you enough the people who think that they can put all this together. I'm not gonna hire anybody. I'm gonna run my own practice. You will run yourself into the ground. Elon Musk said something amazing to me. Or for, not to me, I don't talk to Elon Musk personally, but he said something amazing in, a, in an interview once and you know they were remarking how brilliant he was and he says, well, no, I, I don't even know how to build a rocket. I couldn't even tell you how to start, but my company can. A company together, a super intelligence that brings everybody together and accomplishes great things. And when you learn that, that your employees are more valuable than anything else, you treat them right. You do good for them. They will go to bat for you all day long and they will help you build something wonderful. The CRM system that I'm hoping you will get on and use because I can help you if you use it. If you don't use it, I'm not going to be able to help you. It is a task-based program. Great book to read, Atomic Habits. If you learn how to break things down into simple habits every day, break things down into simple tasks. You can have and do anything. Employees can help you if you can break down everything that they're supposed to do in simple enough tasks that anyone can understand. And that really depends on your ability, how intelligent you are to pull that together. But EP firms, when you get in there, you're going to see there are three main functionalities out. The third is tasks, assigning tasks, and assigning a due date, and making people be responsible to get their tasks done. The more tasks you get done, the more money you'll make. Simple as that. Number nine, write a book. I told you these last two were gonna be incredibly valuable. I never understood how valuable this step was until I actually got it done. It was hard, but I wrote a book. You can write a book. Writing a law book is super easy, and I'm gonna walk you through how you do it. It takes time and dedication. You can't just, oh, go steal other people's stuff and you can put it together really easy and you can look smart. No, it's not how it works. You don't cheat the system. If you cheat the system, you're gonna be a nobody. You gotta learn how to be somebody. You gotta learn how to put it together yourself because you need to learn the information. Because once you know the information, number 10 steps going to work. 
but I promise you, it was the greatest thing that I did for my practice was I sat down for 30 minutes every morning, I got up early, got into my, my, my office, and I sat down and I just started writing. And I wrote 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 and it was garbage. And then I sent it to an editor, she put it together, and then I went back and re-edited it one last time, and it's been great. I'm now on my fourth book. And I'm actually writing my fifth book that has nothing to do with law, but I've come to love writing, even though I'm not still not the best at it, but I know now it's very simple. You don't have to be, because remember our, our last step? You by yourself can't do it, but you and others can. And that's how you're going to pull it off, is as you start to get your practice going, you're gonna get extra money, and you're gonna take that extra money, and you're gonna reinvest it in yourself, and you're gonna write a book, and you're gonna know your subject better than anybody else. And the last 10, in every area of practice, there is the big ticket item. The big ticket item which you can sell for a ton of money. And mine, I did estate planning and it struggled to figure it out. I found it in elder law. Once I learned elder law, it required me to go write a book on it, to really learn it and to understand it and to understand it in a way where I could sell big ticket items. But now I can regularly ask for $15,000 out of my clients because I'm going to save them hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's very simple to do. Once you figure it out, you will figure out your big ticket item. And a lot of times people go, uh, I don't see what you're saying, Taylor. This makes no sense to me. I, I don't see how I can charge $15,000 to do a flat fee for some work that I do. If you are struggling to come up with a big ticket item, do not worry. I will give you my big ticket item. How I do elder, elder law, I will be giving uh, to those people in the course later on. I will give you this spreadsheet how we take assets from, uh, from countable assets to non-countable assets and how we convert them. So in this plan right here, I put it together and at the end I show someone exactly how much um, I will be saving them through uh, an elder law plan that I'll be put together. Now you will have to spend some time to learn elder law in your state and how it works in your state. But ultimately I can tell you the, the sales point where I can sit you down and Oftentimes I can sit a client down and say, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save your family $400,000, you know, and often, sometimes I do percentages. I, I say, well, I want 10% of what I'm gonna save you um, as part of the plan, or, you know, if it's lower income people, I, I usually am just, I'll do a flat fee, lower it down, try to help people out. It just depends on the client that comes in and, and who wants to do it, but um, often, it, you can run a small practice and take maybe 12 cases a year and in those 12 cases make over $100,000 and keep things really simple with an elder law asset protection plan system. And so uh, this will be put together, but I, if you can't come up with your own big ticket item, uh, this is what we'll do. But this will be done later on in the course. You have to sign up for the course to get this. But there's all types of ways that a good attorney can save tens of thousands of dollars on taxes. The vision. I realized five years ago there was going to be a serious problem with attorneys getting business in the future. I realized that our business was so dependent upon behaviors that humans have developed in the past where we went to people and trusted people to get things done for us. As I began to lose business slowly over the years, I realized the only way, the only way that I was going to solve this problem is somehow integrating technology into small practices so attorneys could now compete in the future. The vision of EP firms is going to automate law firms. And we're gonna automate law firms through many different ways. One of my biggest struggles has been marketing and keeping up with marketing while I'm trying to run my law practice. So I try to figure out a system. EP Firms is designed to go and automate all the things that you're supposed to be doing to continue to get business through your clients. For example, one of the biggest things is yearly emails to your clients to remind them to review estate planning documents, to uh, hold annual meetings for business formation, uh, or just generally ad advising them to see if they need to come back in for any tax purposes. That yearly email I was, should have been sending out 
to my over 10,000 clients, but I stopped doing it. I, it was too hard hiring someone to remember, oh, on this day, you're supposed to email these people. I needed something. And so EP Firms is designed to send out that yearly reminder, reminding everybody to come back in on a, and review their documents, or if they don't want to come back in, just go back and review your documents. The second thing I realized is I needed a client portal, a portal, a place where uh, people can go, an app so they can see all their legal documents, know their legal matters, and also a way to communicate with people as they enter information into their app, things that attorneys could do for them to save them money and to help people out. The third thing that I realized that I was, it was going to need is some way to automate my billing. So many little things are done to my firm that are so difficult to keep track of. For example, as a task is entered in and something is mailed out, 90% of the time my staff forgets, hey, we need to bill that to the client. But what if a system was created where automated billing happened? So every time we could put, hey, when this thing is mailed out, this is what is charged. And so it's always the same thing happening. As I do a task, I know how long it takes me to usually to draft an application for an independent administration. And so I could have that always be put in there and it automatically insert the bill and it can automatically figure out uh, how long something should have taken me based upon tasks being completed. The next thing that I realized is there are so many things I just don't know. So much information out there that other attorneys use and as I was developing EP firms and going through and talking to other attorneys, he goes, well, do you do this? Hey, do you tell your client if they're going to disinherit a kid to come back in yearly and reaffirm that will? I thought, no, I, 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 I don't do that. I, I didn't even think that that's a good idea. Yeah, well, you want them to do that because that other kid is going to sue. And when that other child sues, you want to show year after year, this is exactly what your client wanted. And I thought, what if we had a consultation page that as the attorney enters information into it, suggestions on what needs to be done, what needs to be drafted. You know, if your state requires a qualified income trust, immediately the system tells the attorney, your client needs a qualified income trust. And then a, a report could be generated from that. And then the attorney knows exactly from the best practices of other attorneys what to do simply by signing up with a platform that I couldn't keep track of all the data that I was supposed to be gathering. I didn't know who my most efficient employees were. And as we developed the task system within EP firms and we track whether or not my staff is getting all their tasks done on time, I get a report back where I can click on my, my uh, staff member's name, I can see how efficient they are in getting their jobs done. And those who get their jobs done more, EP Firms is going to be designed to be a central system to automate so an attorney can keep up with the technology age going forward and they can run their practices efficiently and they don't need large staff to handle what a computer can with just simply automating a system within a computer system. And no other platform that is out there is doing that currently. But that's where we're going with EP Firms. We are going to develop into a system that it does everything for you. It will recommend how you're supposed to move your practice forward. It's going to tell you exactly when you're in trouble or when you need to hire someone in the future. It's going to put all the best practices into one central place. And as your staff and you enter the information in, the system will tell you how to better your practice and how to make more money. And that is the vision. That is what we're going for. I'm hoping to take these courses to help you get on track. I'm going to do my job and keep spending the money to develop the system so we all can benefit. I hope you sign up. hope you watch my course. And I hope you learn the information that you need to learn to better your practice. I can't guarantee success with any program. There's no guarantees in life. It's going to be dependent on you. If you will do the things that I ask you to do, you're going to be successful, wildly successful, far more successful than, I'll, than I ever have been. And that's my hope and dream.